Hi, I'm Jacqueline. Oh my gosh, did you hear that? <laughs> yes. What the hell was that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what's what's oh, happening at your at your apartment right now, Courtney? I don't know, but I know in about three minutes I'm gonna get a ring doorbell alert from a neighbor. Did you guys just hear a loud bang? <laughs> <laughs> Do they like to do, um, like, do they think they hear gunshots all the time, uh-huh. too? Like, did everyone hear? It's fireworks. It's 4th of July, Linda. It wasn't a gunshot or the car it's backfiring. or. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. But anyway, hi, yeah. I'm Courtney. Hi there. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, this yeah. is Caffeinated Crimes. Um, apparently... Who knows what the hell's happening outside Courtney's apartment, but I'm very glad I caught that yeah. on the audio. I hope there are no caffeinated crimes happening outside your apartment because it yikes. wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there was the other day Kevin was in a meeting and I was up here and there was the loudest bang. And I was like, dang, what did Kevin do? And then he texted me and said, are you okay? And I was like, it wasn't either of us. And like, you're like, oh, I no. had one cat and he had the other cat. And we were like, um. what happened? <laughs> but yeah. Um, wow. All right. Let's. That episode started off with a bang. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, speaking of bangs, I do have a funny story. Um, <laughs> let's just go ahead and jump on into this because we got to get this episode rolling somehow. That tied in great. I love that. Okay, go ahead. (laughs) So for my job, about once a week, I have to go to the courthouse to do some searches, like, in person. Um, And so every time you go in, you got to go through security. They got to check your purse. You got to walk through a metal detector. You know, all your typical going into a government (laughs) building shit. Um, And I have this really tiny purse. I mean, it is tiny. It's a pocket purse. Mm -hmm. And I... It went through, and the officer, he kind of knows me. He sees me every week. He should know me at this point. Um, Mm -hmm. And he was like, do you have, like, a lighter in your bag that's, like, shaped like a gun? I was like, (laughs) no. Don't think so. No, I do. I was like, I don't smoke. (laughs) I don't have a lighter. (laughs) So I, like, opened my purse to show him, like, I don't have a gun. I don't have a lighter. But he, like, shows me the screen from, like, scanning my bag, and it looks like a gun (laughs) is in my bag. And I was like... What? And then we determined, because, like, he's like, I think it's your keys. So he pulled my keys out and, like, ran my purse again. And it was my keys. My keys were in a perfect position to literally look like a gun. Oh, my God. Enough that a security officer who looks at people's purses every day legit Mm -hmm. thought there was some gun-shaped object in my purse. So that is the most Courtney story I've ever heard. Because I was like, how did I get my keys in here perfectly? To, to look, look like a I gun. Mean, it literally looks like the barrel, the handle, the trigger, everything <laughs> like a gun. You should be like, can I take a picture of this, sir? Because I need to say I this. heard him. I heard him when I walked away talking to the other like security officer and being like, look at this. Her keys were in her purse. Like he was like, he probably did take a picture of it. He's probably like, this is the craziest shit I've ever seen. Yeah. I'm glad he didn't like, you know, call for backup. <laughs> like, yeah. oh shit, this girl. <laughs> They're like, this little, like, five-foot-nothing right. girl, I think we can take her. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, we don't really have any um, true crime updates or other updates because we are recording back-to-back. So, does anything happen in the last, like, week, an hour, week, we are, we're not there yet. So, mm-hmm. you know, it. we'll let y'all know next week. So, yeah. I'm trying to see... When this comes out, I don't know what day it is currently. <laughs> so Same. this will come out the last week of February. Um, so hopefully February doesn't feel as long as January did. Yes. But we're going to go ahead and jump on into this case. Um, so for this case, we used the La Justia website for some court transcripts, murderpedia.org, ranker.com, and a New York Daily News article. Lowell Lee Andrews grew up on a successful family farm in Wolcott, Kansas in the 1940s, and neighbors described him as the nicest boy in Wolcott, and that's certainly not how he's remembered today. (laughs) So, Lowell Lee Andrews was born on September 21st, 1940 to William and Opal Andrews, and he had an older sister named Jenny Marie, which is such a cute name. I like how that name, like, flows, you know. 
Very so cute. his family's farm was very successful, and he was set to inherit it, and he attended college at the University of Kansas, where he majored in zoology and played the bassoon. So, doing a lot here. Friends described him as goofy, musical, and academic, particularly in science. And he wasn't very social, but he was described as sweet and gentle, and he spent time at his church. He was an avid reader and preferred to spend time alone in his room, um, reading rather than hanging out with friends. Um, And while he was well-liked and a pleasant boy, no one knew that he secretly dreamed of poisoning his family and moving to Chicago to be a gangster and hitman. (laughs) <laughs> like how how where does that dream come from i want to know yeah you're like that's what i just think about at night yeah so at 18 years old in 1958 lowell came home from his sophomore year of college to spend the thanksgiving holiday with his parents and sister and his sister was attending college in oklahoma but had come home that weekend as well and on november 28th he was upstairs reading the brothers Karazm Kar- 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 Karazm. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Karamazov. Karama- Karamazov. Oh my goodness. While the rest of his family were downstairs watching TV. Um, he finished his book around 7 p.m., then shaved, put on a suit, and went downstairs with a 22 caliber rifle and revolver. He then turned on a light and shot his mother three times and his brother twice. He then shot his sister Jenny between the eyes and she died instantly. His parents were still alive and as his mother moved towards him, he shot her three more times. His father tried to crawl into the kitchen and she he shot him an additional 15 times until he stopped. So much rage. Yes. So after murdering his whole family, he knew he needed to establish an alibi. So first, he opened several windows and removed their screens to make it look like a burglary. And he ransacked the house, emptying his mother's and sister's purses and dumping out the dresser drawers. And then he put guns in his father's car and drove it to his apartment in the nearby town of Lawrence. So he drove the state highway instead of the local turnpike. And some say that this was because he was afraid somebody would like recognize him on the turnpike, like recognize his car and be like, I saw his car on the turnpike. Mm -hmm. And at this apartment, he told his roommate and landlady that he needed to pick up his typewriter to write an essay. He also told his roommate that the roads were very slippery and had taken him two hours to drive there from his home on the farm. He then went to the Granada Movie Theater to watch the movie Mardi Gras. While there, he made sure to speak with the theater employees to strengthen his alibi. After the movie, he drove to the Kansas River, where he disposed of his guns. And he did stop by a gas station in Lawrence and spoke with several people in order to be remembered. It's believed he did this so there would be an established time of when he headed home. So he then went home to discover, quote-unquote, the murders. First, he fed the dogs. Then at 1 a.m., sat on the porch to call the police and report a robbery gone wrong. So the sheriff's deputy arrived and asked what happened, and he pointed to the room with his dead family and told them to look in there. His demeanor was calm and cool, which, if you're establishing an alibi, don't seem so collected when yeah, they come. Like, you put all that effort into, like, all these places and talking to people, and it's like, you you got to change your own behavior a yeah. little bit there if you, you want to sit there work. and you're like, It's in there. Go, you know. All right. (laughs) So the deputy said he was sitting on his porch petting his dog when they arrived. Police asked him about funeral arrangements, and he said, I don't care what you do with them. Hmm. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Um, When asked what he felt, he said he didn't feel anything about it. The time came, and I was going, I was doing what I had to do. That's all there was to it. Okay. Hmm. Yep. So the police are obviously a little suspicious here of Lowell's odd behavior. Um, And since the family were Baptist, the coroner called the Baptist minister, Verto Dameron. And after arriving at the sheriff's office, Lowell asked to speak to Dameron alone. So Dameron gave him a Coke and he's like, basically like, you didn't do this terrible thing, did you? Like, (laughs) it's like asking him, but he's kind of like, you would never like, I know you didn't do this, right? Um, but he said, if you did, now is the time to purge your soul. So Lowell then confessed to the Baptist minister what he had done. 
Um, Dameron told him that he could get him a good attorney, but Lowell was like, no, bring the police back in. I'm ready to make a statement. Lowell then gave a very detailed statement of the crimes he committed, including all the information that Courtney just went over with his alibi and all that stuff. And a few days later, officers and divers used, used large magnets to locate the weapons in the Kansas River. And at one point, Lowell supposedly told the investigators that he killed his family because he wanted to inherit his family's farm and the $1,800 that was in his father's savings account. So he's just given all his secrets away. <laughs> On February 20th, 1959, the defense filed a motion saying that Lowell wasn't competent to stand trial. So the court appointed three psychiatrists from Kansas City to evaluate him. Um, he was sent to the Men Menninger Clinic, um, which was a mental institution in Topeka, Kansas. So Dr. Joseph Satin was one of the doctors assigned to him, and he diagnosed Lowell as schizophrenic, but said that he was aware of his actions the night he murdered his family and that he understood he should be punished for the crime. So the group, con the group concluded that Lowell was indeed competent to stand trial. Lowell pled not guilty by reason of insanity and went to trial where he was found guilty and sentenced to death. So Lowell did submit appeals which in part stated that the minister should not have been allowed to testify at his trial as a member of their faith. Um, however, there's really nothing in the Baptist religion that, like, requires ministers to keep confessions, like you would see in, like, Catholicism. Mm -hmm. Like, so basically they're like, no, like, he, like, willingly, like, told this minister this. The minister even offered to get him an attorney. You know, yeah. it wasn't like he went to confession and then, you know, yeah, he told on him. The court further stated that Lowell's confession to the minister was not his only confession. He repeated his confession afterward, and it was recorded, and he then also confessed to Dr. Joseph Satin while under psychiatric evaluation. So, like, three times he's told the same story. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, this is the only instance of that that they have to go off of. Um, but all of his appeals were denied, and Lowell supposedly told a reporter from Journal World, I'm not sorry, and I'm not glad I did it. I just don't know why I did it. So, very weird statement. <laughs> I also find it weird that he was like, my dream is to move to Chicago and be a gangster and hitman. But then he's also like, I killed my family because I wanted to inherit the farm. Yeah. But you want to be a farmer or a gangster? <laughs> Both, I guess, maybe. Both. He wants he wants the farm, you know, during the, the summer months. Yeah. And he wants to, get, nah, I don't know. <laughs> Who wants to go to Chicago and be a gangster in the winter months? That does not sound it's fun. too cold. <laughs> so while on death row at the Lansing Correctional Facility, Lowell met Richard Hickok and Perry Smith. So Hickok and Smith are the infamous subjects of Truman Capote's book, In Cold Blood. Um, In Cold Blood is considered the first book of the true crime genre. And Capote describes how Hickok and Smith met and murdered the Clutter family in Holcomb, Kansas. And he does briefly discuss Lowell Lee Andrews, his crimes, and his time spent on death row with Hickok and Smith while they were in prison together. Um, that's how I heard of this case, was reading In Cold Blood. And I was like, oh, like... Who's this other? Because they went pretty in depth into, mm -hmm. um, you know, more than like some of the other stuff that they talked about. So I was like, mm, we need to dig into this one a little bit more. So Lowell Lee Andrews was executed by hanging at 12.01 a.m. on November 30th, 1962. Um, he was 22 years old, which I feel like we say this all the time, but so some of these cases young. and I'm just like, God, like they were just babies. Yeah. Like, the fuck? Um, and I always find last meals very interesting, mm -hmm. like what people chose to eat. So his last meal was fried chicken, french fries, lettuce, soda, vanilla ice cream with strawberries, and cigars. So is he just getting like a head of lettuce? <laughs> I don't know. Is it chopped up? <laughs> it doesn't. Is it, it like It doesn't a leaf? go with any of the <laughs> fried chicken, french fries, and lettuce. And like all of it so makes sense except the lettuce. Is he like, I mean, I got to have something healthy before I go. <laughs> But I'm also like, do people like enjoy just like lettuce? Like I like spinach. I like like a spring mix. But like, I mean, like I'll eat it. But if I'm picking my last meal, are people like lettuce? Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, like I'll use like, it in a salad or like a taco salad or like a burger. Like roll. I'll put it on. Yeah, you know, like I'll use it. But if it's my last meal, I don't think like. <laughs> Unless it's romaine lettuce. Is it iceberg lettuce or romaine lettuce? I mean, that is a good point. That's because, a game changer. I mean, 
Iceberg is like bottom rung. Yeah, but it's very lettuce, low calorie, you and know? you can eat like a shit ton of it for like five calories. So I eat a that lot. That is true. <laughs> but <laughs> if I'm given a choice of lettuce, though, or like greens in general, like I'm always gonna have spinach at the top. Like I love some spinach, mm-hmm. and then probably romaine. And then, I don't know, I guess there's, like, other types of lettuce. And then icebergs, like, yeah, on the ground. You know? That's my, my lettuce tears. Yeah. <laughs> so. so now I'm very curious what type of lettuce he had, in what capacity. <laughs> I mean, everything else to me makes sense together. Like, it just sounds like yeah. the food you get when you're like, I'm pigging out tonight. Like, I don't want a single yeah. healthy thing in my... But then you have <laughs> lettuce. But lettuce. Anyway. Yeah. And, like, the cigars, like... I get a cigar yeah, I get after that your last meal. You're like, like, I'm one last cigar. I'd want like a rum and coke or something. You know what I mean? Like, I'd want yeah. some alcohol. I might even do a cigar. Something to chill me the fuck out. I would, I would for sure, if this was my last meal, death row, I'm leaving this world. I would for sure have a cigarette after that last meal. I do enjoy an occasional cigarette. Not, I haven't since I got pregnant and breastfeeding. But before that, you yeah. know, I would enjoy an occasional cigarette. So I would for sure have one at my last meal. Yeah. And then I don't have that aftertaste, you know. Don't doesn't to matter because I'm dead. <laughs> so that's why you got to eat all the fried foods too, because it's like, well, I'm gonna have, I'm not gonna have a tummy ache later. It doesn't matter. I'm not gonna have exactly. a tummy later. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um, there are also rumors that because Lowell was such a large man, he hung for a long time before he was pronounced dead, and then the rope eventually broke. But these rumors are rumors are not confirmed. Who knows I feel like for I've sure? I've kind of heard stories of that though, like people with like bigger necks, like it's like takes yeah. longer, like for the rope. But that's also does Ugh. not sound. Like... Which means that like they were like strangled and not like broke mm-hmm. their neck, which is how it's supposed to happen. Yeah. Ugh. So that was like a Yikes. slow, painful death, which is very yeah. unconstitutional. Yep. Um, which, speaking of the Constitution, kind of, sort of, um, I found this super, super interesting because only four people have been executed in Kansas since Lowell's death. Um, so two of them were the um, what, who we just mentioned, Richard Hickok and Perry Smith. Um, so those three, and then there was one more man after that. But no one has been executed in Kansas since then. Um, the death penalty has not been abolished there. They just don't really use it. So I found, because I, when I read that, like he was one of the last people to be executed. I was like, oh, they must have abolished it. Nope, they just don't use it, yeah. even though it's they That's could. That's kind of crazy because so. I mean, I guess I don't really think much about Kansas, but I don't re- really view it as like a very progressively liberal state or anything. Like, yeah, interesting. Yeah. So William Opal and Jenny Andrews were buried together with one tombstone in the Mount Salem Cemetery in Excello, Missouri. Ex- Excello, Missouri. Expediamus. That's sorry. all I heard when you said that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Some town in Missouri. And after Lowell's execution, he was buried next to them with a separate tombstone that reads only son. So who, who, did who that? made this decision? Who did that? To put oh, next to your entire family that you murdered. Yeah. Ugh. 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 Yeah, I don't know who thought that was a good idea. Yeah, but that was a crazy one. Yeah, so that was the story of Lowell Lee Andrews, who murdered his entire family for no apparent reason and put together what he thought was a great alibi, but then you were weird and it didn't Honestly, work. Honestly, the thing is, because this is like the 19, uh, like 50s, 60s era, mm-hmm. it probably would have worked if he hadn't been so yeah. weird. Yeah. Like, exactly. especially if you're like telling your roommate, it took me like two hours to get here and it's not really like they have security cameras places and people are like, yeah, I saw him at the movie. I saw him here. So if he would have acted just a little bit more distraught, mm-hmm. he probably would have gotten away with it, which is crazy. Yeah. And of course you have the psychiatrist that's like, oh yeah, like he's schizophrenic, but also that had nothing to do with him murdering his family. So it's like, okay, what? Yeah. So what happened here? Like, did did you just, like, what was, was it really about money and property or did I you just snap? I mean, I was thinking too, when you said his age, especially, I'm like, I wonder mm-hmm. if this case would have been treated differently today. Like if he mm-hmm. would have been, I definitely don't, I don't know. I don't want to say I definitely don't think he would have gotten the death penalty. I think he probably would have gotten some other, like, life in prison kind of thing. Or maybe even yeah. some, like, 
time in a mental hospital, but I do wonder, like, mm-hmm. how it would have been treated today, like, with what we know about mental health. True. Like, if, and, like, his age, too, and, like, your prefrontal mm-hmm. cortex isn't all developed and everything, and, like, yeah, everything going on, like, what would have happened if this was a today case with him? Yeah. That's a good point. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, sorry this episode is a little bit shorter this week, guys. It was one of those that was, like, long enough that you couldn't really make it part of a series, yeah. but, you know, still going to be a shorter episode, um, and Courtney and I are recording back-to-back, and we just recorded a long episode, so hopefully you will forgive us um, just this one week. Of course, you guys can go to patreon.com slash caffeinatedcrimes if you want um extra episodes that if you didn't get enough of us Mm -hmm. in this week's short episode you can get some more there because i think it'll come out thursday actually so i think in two days the bonus will come out so perfect so definitely do that if that's something if you guys don't if if you're not getting your caffeinated crimes fill for the week courtney what is your perk of the week okay my perk of the week is the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window have you heard of this no oh Really? Is this is this with Kristen Bell? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I just watched. <laughs> I just watched it. Um, I just want to point out because I'm finding out, like on TikTok and other places, that people don't know that this is a parody. So it's not <laughs> a serious. I mean, it's like quote serious, but it's like making mm-hmm. fun of. Mm. Like I think it's like the girl in the window or the girl. You know that uh-huh. one. I think that recently came out. It's like kind of making fun of that. Um, gotcha. I mean, it is kind of in a diluted way. Like, it's very, Mm -hmm. like, drier humor where it's, like, Mm. making it like it's serious. But it's, like, Mm -hmm. over-the-top things where it's, like, (laughs) you know. But um, I thought it was pretty funny. And I thought it was, like, it's only, like, eight episodes. They're, like, 20, Mm. 25 minutes each. Like, I Mm -hmm. flew through it. But I thought it was really good. Um, I love Kristen Bell and Mm -hmm. (laughs) pretty much everything she does. Yeah. I'll watch. Um, (laughs) But... (laughs) It was really funny um, in, like, a – I don't want you to go in, like, thinking it's going to be, like, Parks and Rec or The Office, like, to people. I don't want people to be, like, I'm not laughing. But, like, especially when I was, like, knowing people thought it was serious, like, mm. I found it hilarious. Like, you watched that scene and thought that was real. Like, that's hilarious. But I think – is it one of those things where it's, like, when you have, like, the insider knowledge of, like, that genre, like, you recognize the humor yeah. in it that, like, mm-hmm. so, like, that kind of reminds me of when Andrew and I watched um, Only Murders in the Building, and, like, I died laughing through, like, the whole yeah. thing. I thought it was hilarious. And, like, Andrew didn't, like, not think it was funny, but, like, I definitely found it funnier than him mm-hmm. because we are so immersed in the world of true crime that, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, the little, like, jokes you get more anyway yeah and it's like her like opening her wine and like pouring two (laughs) bottles in a glass and just sitting there and being like oh my god what did i see and it's just like so funny i don't know i just thought it was really funny um especially towards the end it's just (laughs) it's just like off the wall and i'm like how do people think this was real (laughs) like i've only seen like like when you said that i was like okay i can picture not even like a a preview maybe but i don't know something Mm -hmm. but i really i didn't know anything about like what it was or anything i was just like yeah i think i heard that there was a thing in a window in high kristen bell (laughs) that's pretty much it was it amy adams who recently had the movie like the girl in the window Mm -hmm. or something yep so i think it's kind of a parody of that where she's like seeing Mm -hmm. someone murdered in the window and everyone's like you're crazy like you have this like trauma that happened to you like you're Mm -hmm. stupid and like all that stuff and um they the end scene was kind of weird, but I think I know what they're hinting at, which I'm like, are you going to make a season two, like, making fun of this? Because that'd be kind of <laughs> funny. But it was very good, and I would recommend watching it, especially if, like, I feel like a lot of, like, people who are in true crime watch a lot of thrillers, too. So mm-hmm. if you watch those, I think people will really appreciate it and find it funny. <laughs> so definitely recommend it. Um, I also watched Tinder Swindler. Um, I'm sure everyone at this point has, like, been talking about it. It was okay. I mean, I didn't really mm-hmm. pay, pay full attention. I thought the story itself was, like, batshit crazy. Like, I was mm-hmm. like, what the fuck is happening? Um, but I don't know if it was, like, one of the best true crime documentaries, like, in yeah. history. You know, like, I was, like, researching an episode while I watched it. Like, kind of happy. What um, What platforms is it on? 
Netflix. So it's a Netflix okay. original documentary. Gotcha. Check it out. So, yeah, it was a pretty good one. Um, but yeah, Jacqueline, what is your perk of the week? So my perk of the week, don't laugh at me guys, but today I bought new blinds and I'm really excited about them. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, guys, while your co-host immediately starts laughing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but see, I, I so, so the blinds above my kitchen sink are very, like, finicky. Like, if you don't, like, open them just right, the whole fucking thing will fall on you. So <laughs> this happened This happened to me, like, three times this week. And then Andrew kept putting them back, <laughs> back up for me. Like, he came home one day and he's like, did, did you have some issues with the blinds again? Because they're just, like, all over the kitchen counter. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, clearly, clearly I did. Um, but then the last time he went to put them back up, they were just, like, broken, broken. So I haven't had any blinds in my kitchen for a week, which is, like, ugh, I don't like. Which, I mean, it's my window facing my back, like, the side of my yard, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, like, it's not like so many people are going to just, like, be able to see me. But it's still, like, ugh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, the people. Speaking of people in the window, you know? Yeah, it's oh. going to be the woman across the street. Wait, the woman in the house across the street from the woman in the window. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, see, and, now that, and that's why I've gone over this with Andrew. He doesn't get it, but that's why it freaks me out to have the blinds open when it's dark outside because people can mm-hmm. just see in and you can't see, see them. Right and yeah. People have been watching me in my kitchen, washing my dishes. Okay, I'm creeped out. Anyway, so that's my perk of the week is that we went to get blinds for that. And then we were like, you know what? Let's get like the nicer blinds. So we got like the thicker ones versus like the little teeny tiny blinds. Um, but they apparently are a pain in the ass to put up because it took Andrew a long time to put up like not even half of the ones that we bought because we're replacing like all of our blinds with them. So mm-hmm. that'll be the, our project for the rest of the week. And by hour, I mean Andrew. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, but... <laughs> I'm super excited. They look really good, though. So I'm very happy about that. It's a nice little, yeah, like, It is one of those things. Update. Like, once you get older, like, the little things that excite yeah. you. Of like, oh, look, a new... I always love, like, a new kitchen gadget where I'm like... Yes. Look at this avocado yes. slicer. It's like a three-in-one. I can cut it, peel it, and slice it all in one. <laughs> Did my nana get you that? Because she got me that. <laughs> no, it was on my wedding registry. <laughs> Because I thought it was cool. <laughs> I was like, so I don't have to dirty up another knife. I can just use just this Just do it all in one. Yeah, I'm telling you. The little things mm-hmm. in adulthood, I'm telling you, is just like, yeah, for sure. So, so if you want to tell us. <laughs> let us. So let us know Come what on, your current favorite show or current binge watch is. Um, what your latest adult purchase was for your... <laughs> house or apartment that you're excited for um what your favorite kitchen gadget is i don't know anyway um you can do so <laughs> on instagram at caffeinated crimes pod on twitter at caff crimes pod that's c-a-f-f crimes pod on facebook at caffeinated crimes podcast you can send us an email at caffeinated crimes pod at gmail.com we're on youtube at caffeinated crimes podcast we're on tiktok at caffeinated crimes and if you feel so inclined have a little extra money laying around once you get your tax refund back you know you got <laughs> that money hits the bank baby um if you're like i want extra content because this episode was kind of short and i think next week's is going to be kind of short too so if you want some extra content just <laughs> head on over to patreon.com slash caffeinated crimes you will get all of our backload of bonus episodes video episodes q and a's anything you can get that all there for at least five dollars different tiers just go look. We'll, we'll explain it on there. Cabinetcrimes.com. It's, it's on the site. Wait. Nope. Patreon. <laughs> we do have a... <laughs> Patreon.com slash Crimes. Yes. But like Courtney said, we do also have a website, Crimes.com. So you can find all of our episodes there if for some reason your current listening platform mm-hmm. does not work for you. Yeah. Um... And if you guys want to get a Caffeinated Crimes pin, sticker, and a $10 gift card to the coffee shop of your choice, you can go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review. We are so close to reaching 50 of those. Once we hit that, we will do a drawing for someone to win those items. Um, And then really the real winners here are me and Courtney, who don't have to say this every week again. So we are all about that. Um, you guys know how to go there. I gave you a tutorial. If you need like a like a screenshot uh, video mm-hmm. walkthrough, you know, let me know. I'll be happy to send it to you. We got yeah. you guys. For sure. Please, please do that. Um, 
I mean, we're only three or four away. We're so close. We're so close to you guys never so happen close. to fucking hear this ever again. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, go have a cup of coffee. And don't commit a crime. <laughs> <laughs>